Welcome to Pathways, a career podcast from the Idaho State University Career Center. I'm your host, Mark Beaver. Today we're talking with Maurice Pittman. Maurice is a counselor and advisor for TRIO Student Support Services here at Idaho State University. Maurice has an incredible story full of dead ends, grit, and resilience to overcome. Please settle in and enjoy my conversation with Maurice. Hey, Maurice, how you doing today? Good. How are you doing, bro? Good, good. So, Maurice, you're one of these guys I see all over campus. And whenever I see you, you seem to be having a conversation with someone. Like, everybody knows you on campus. All the students, all the people. You're a beloved character on our campus. Um, at least that's in my, you know, few years here. That's what I see. Um, what is your job, and how did you, how did you get to this point of uh, campus celebrity? Great question. Well, I work for TRIO Student Support Services. I am a counselor advisor. So I help first-generation students, low-income and students students with disabilities get their four-year degree. So so I'm always talking to people. And I love the compliment. When I first started at uh, ISU as a student, my professor, we would walk on campus and talk and have our meetings, and he'd say, man, you're like the mayor. You know everybody here. You're not even from here. So that's a great compliment, and I love it. Thanks. (laughs) No doubt. So, yeah, that sounds like a job. You get to you're meeting with students all the time. All the you're, time. You're creating relationships yes. with students. Yeah. Um, so that leads me into my next question. From like a pure work aspect, from just like a day to day, like a job aspect. What what is it about your job that you get the most fulfillment out of? What do you love the most from purely like a work yeah. aspect? What well, what I really love about my job is that I'm helping students directly. Students come in as freshmen or sophomores or at any level, and they're looking for assistance. Assistance. They're looking for help, and it feels great to see my students succeed and be successful and graduate and move on to the real world. Um, seeing them get that four year degree is, is really important. It feels good. Yeah. 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 There's something that's really nice about that. Huh? Yeah. I was just talking with a student the other day. They're asking me the same question. Like, what's what's your favorite like? career center story and I'm like you know it's not I don't have any it's about the stories that students share with me when yeah. they're like hey that class or that meeting like help me find something important that's like a really special that's what, that gives you like a really special kind of of feeling it right? does yeah. it does yeah because you know it's about those build, building those relationships you know and and keeping it real like you know I, I think students want to hear it like they, they either they need to hear it or like you know what they're at a point where I need to hear what's going on in this campus and, and, and with, with my education, and that's what I try and provide, you know. So what does, like, a day-to-day look like for you? Sure. Uh, day-to-day is, you know, um, seeing students, whether it's um, r- around this time, is registration. So for schedules, fill out FAFSAs, that's, like, the, the shortened things. But they may have issues with um, financial aid or have some personal issues or just needing help to navigate through the college system. Um, so that's kind of the day to day, like, you know, we're seeing students all day and it goes in spurts. Some, some days I'm doing more, you know, behind the scenes paperwork and so forth, maintaining all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And other days I'm, I'm swamped, like, like all day today, I was swamped with students making sure that they're getting their schedules ready for registration within the next week or so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hammering down this week. Huh? Yeah. So we talk a lot also with our students about like, you know, you get this, this great satisfaction from your work and your day to day of this kind of overall like helping people, um, what what does this job do for you like outside of work that that helps you kind of find fulfillment in your life outside of the job? What's the balance there? So basically, um, for me, I'm giving back to a program that helped me when I was in college. So Trio, uh, the services is not just here. At Idaho State, um, Trio is nationwide. The, the Trio programs, and here at Idaho State, we have virtually almost all the programs. So there's like Upward Bound, Talent Search, which are pre-college programs. Um, SSS, which I do, is a college program. We have McNair and so forth, and other programs. But when I was in college, I was searching for something for help um, and just camaraderie and assistance and a place where I belonged. And Trio is where I found where I belonged. And so from the experience that I went through in college, um, I feel that I'm giving back 
to students as an advisor here. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming full circle. Yeah, full yeah. circle. Exactly. It's pretty incredible to be able to be on that, like, to be able to give back to something that helped you so much. It's it's amazing. I mean, it's like a, a kun matata, right? <laughs> you know, um, I, I can't say it enough how much TRIO, um, the support that I received in college, it transcends to what I'm doing now because I hear the words of my advisors, right? And and the wisdom that I picked up from them, I'm giving to the students. You know, at least I'm trying to help the students to realize that this is bigger, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Have you always known that you like to help people? Has that been kind of like a through line for you? No. Um, I, I was always told that I had a kind face growing up, and, <laughs> and I always listened to people, right? But um, honestly, bro, like, and I keep calling you bro. It's a California thing. I'm so sorry. It's fine. Yeah. Be but so. um when I was in college, I, I wanted to go to pharmacy school. So my major was chemistry, mm -hmm. uh, biology, you know, those majors. And I wasn't thriving at all. Um, and But I was very stubborn. I, I said, oh, I, I got to be a pharmacist because my cousin's going to be one. So we're going to be one together. I have a business and so forth. Yeah. And, um, and in the process of not f passing my classes, I was dismissed from college on three separate occasions um, just for poor grades and just – not getting the help that I needed. Um, I changed my major. I think it went from pharmacy to chemistry to biology to British colonial literature, computer science, sociology. Um, but I finally graduated <laughs> with psychology and communications. Okay. Yeah. So what, What? like, how did you kind of get the, the gumption to keep trying again? I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people would hit those roadblocks and – and and take that as a, as a time to stop. Um, and I mean, thank God you didn't, obviously, because yeah. all the good work you're doing, yeah. and, you know, you know, this is something we might try to tell our students or even mid-career seekers, you know, like, yeah, if you hit a roadblock, keep going. But where where did you find the strength or the direction to, to kind of keep going and trying again and trying new paths? Right. A lot of it is, is my family. Um, uh, education was stressed in my in my household. Um, my my family's from Mississippi originally, and sometimes they didn't get the opportunities that everyone else has because of the color of their skin. And but education was something that they talked about how it was a level playing field. And I kept hearing my grandma, my grandpa, my aunts and uncles, my mom's voices in my head. You got to finish. You got to finish. You know. And and I also had a trio guy, Donald Towns, who was really in my corner, really trying to help me to realize. That one, um, that I ch that I that my major wasn't the right choice, and that I should do something that I'm good at. And he would talk to me about Maurice. You've worked with kids, uh, volunteer at schools, mm -hmm. and help with trio, and all my jobs have been with you know different schools. Why not work in the education field? I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, doesn't seem right. You know, doesn't seem right. Um, but when I finally made that decision and chose psychology, and then I had a minor in communications, when I finally pick that or just have the realization that I, that this is it, I thrived. But to answer the question, it was, it was a lot of will and determination. And I guess, I guess I couldn't take no for an answer. Like there was no way I was not going to leave college without a degree. And when I did finish, it, it took me eight years. Um, like in the movie, Tommy boy, Chris Farley talks about how, <laughs> Hey, everybody finishes college in seven years. Right. And then, yeah, doctors. Right. <laughs> and I finished in eight with, you know, I didn't have a doctorate or a master I, undergrad, you know, just because of all the pitfalls that I went through, but it, it made me a very stronger person, a better person to know that determination will despite, you know, cause I was my obstacle. I was my biggest obstacle and I had to get myself out of the way in order for me to thrive. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when did you connect with uh, TRIO? Actually, it was early on. So I was in a summer bridge program where they, they bring students in early, like kind of like, like Bengal Bridges mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And we had all these guest speakers. And one of them was a, a TRIO person, uh, Donald Towns and other people, Johnny G. Watson. They were introducing the people in the program. And it was something that he said that he had everybody stand up. You know, he said, look to your left, look to your right. And he said, these people will not be here in a year. And I was like, can't mean me, you know. <laughs> and sure enough, I mean, out of our group started dwindling down. You know, some graduated and some life happened. And I didn't want to be, honestly, I didn't want to be a statistic of being 
what he said, but also being another black male that didn't finish a degree, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, but I gravitated towards him when I when school started back up in the fall. Um, it was something that I he was just a, a very great figure on campus, and I just I had to be surrounded by greatness, you know. I just wasn't walking in that greatness, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty amazing mentor. He was. He really was. Yeah. Yeah. To to have found. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, it seems like going to school originally with the intention of being like a pharmacist is pretty ambitious and also not something that I feel like most kids would say they want to grow up to be. So just going back a little ways, yeah. um, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Man, none of those, actually. Uh, <laughs> honestly, bro, I, I wanted to be either a baseball player or uh, an archaeologist. Um, I was big into baseball, Little League, baseball man, um, Ladera Little League rocks, uh, and the Dodgers. You know, I grew up watching yeah. the Dodgers and stuff like that. And 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 I, I think at a young age I was very good. I, was, I mean, I remember people telling me, you're very good. And, and in my head, I'm, I'm going to go pro. Right. I mean, you know. Um, and I had an injury that kind of sidelined that. So, And then um, archaeology, um, I, would love, I used to love – um, looking at National Geographics yeah. and looking at the maps and the pictures, and they show all these people on Earth and all these treasures. I'm like, oh, I could, I, that was pretty cool. You yeah. know, you get to travel. Yeah. You know, and as a Boy Scout, we had an archaeologist come and sp speak to the group. Oh. And you know, what do you do? Oh, I travel and da da da. You know, but he's, it, it's hard work. You know, sometimes you don't find what you're looking for, but you spend all this time in in the dirt and the elements, and and it's something about the dirt and the elements that got to me. <laughs> And I was like, so, so you get dirty. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, I can't do this, right? And But I'm thinking, I'm ahead. I play baseball. I got dirty. But then for a job where you get dirty, I, I couldn't, it didn't connect. Yeah. So that quickly changed to, well, I, I got to go to college for something. And it's not baseball or archaeology. It has to be something. So Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that happened, that, that kind of evolution from baseball to archaeology to pharmacy that like happened like in high school kind of or I'm just wondering yeah like late in high school so uh, I had a I have a cousin we're the same age and she knew from a young age that she was going to go into some type of medical field mm -hmm. and uh, as we got older it got to be pharmacy and um, we had an idea that we would do pharmacy together and have a business um, and I thought, okay, cool, you know, I've done chemistry, it's cool, you know. And I get to college and I'm doing okay. And then when I get to organic chemistry, that was my Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. I, I think that was the turning point to say, wow, like, this is not for me because I, I can't pass organic chemistry. That was my, like, that was it right there. So I felt really bad about, you know, not fulfilling the dream that I, that I thought my cousin and I were gonna have and disappointing my, my mom. Um, and when it finally said and done, my mom was just proud that I graduated, you know, and that I stuck with it. You know, she didn't care if it was pharmacy or whatever, as long as I finished, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that that's, that's an inch. I think a lot of our students kind of will get to that point, right? Um, they start with an idea of, of a degree of job that they might want to have yeah. without maybe fully understanding all the, the classes from mm -hmm. A to B and just like how much, you know, maybe math is yeah. involved um, or a class like organic chemistry yeah. or even for maybe on the other side, um, like an upper division writing class that might be very intensive or require a lot of reading. Yeah. Um, so to figure that out about yourself, that that this was kind of, this is your Achilles heel. This is kind of maybe your your turnaround reassess point. Did you come to that on your own? Or you had mentioned um, your, your trio mentor as well. But, um, yeah, how, how did you yeah. come to that? And what, what what did that feel like? What, you know, how did you get through that? So, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I got dismissed from college on three separate occasions. The first two were grades, and the second one was I was over the credit limits. I had like, you know, like here, for example, you need like 120 credits. Right. Um, I had uh, probably over 300 credits from retaking stuff and mm -hmm. just taking this for and this, you know. So 
when my advisor, Donald, had said, you know, bro, like, you are a smart guy, but you don't listen. Mm -hmm. Like, you would think after the first time you got dismissed, you would probably change your major. But no, you are a glutton for punishment. So I went at it again, chemistry and all these things, and I wasn't thriving. And I got kicked out again for that second time. It wasn't until the second time um, that I had to come to the realization that I have to get out of this major. But I was afraid to disappoint people that I thought um, I had to please. Yeah. You know? Um, So when I came to the realization that it's not pharmacy and I actually chose psychology, I thrived. I was like, wow, everything clicked. Everything clicked. Like, wow, you're doing pretty good. Like, like, why didn't you do this two or three years ago? You know, and I, but I think I had to go through the stubbornness. And like I said earlier, I had to get myself out of the way in order for me to thrive. Yeah. Yeah. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Maurice Pittman. He's a counselor and advisor for Trio Student Support Services at Idaho State University. So... Yeah, I think that something you said there is gonna, like that's some really good kind of advice or at least a story to hear that you were really scared that you were going to let somebody down because yeah. you weren't setting out to do what you said you were going to do. Yeah. But then once you got over it, I've heard this from multiple people doing this, yeah. uh, doing this podcast so far, is that once you found the other thing, it was just – it was natural. Yeah. And that's such that's such a special like happenstance to have to like be in something that feels natural, especially after you've you've been kind of butting your head against this wall, trying to force you know a square peg into a round hole you yeah, know, to, yeah, to use yeah. the, the trope. But um, yeah, when you started to thrive, what else did you find out um, about yourself that might apply to your professional life? Sure, that I was resilient, like. I don't give up. Um, like, I've heard the word no. And no just means you're saying no. And I can go to somebody else or someplace else, you know. Like, just right now, you know, I am further my education. I'm, I'm working on my Ed D in education. Oh, awesome. And it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a great program. But when I moved here, I started out working on a PhD in counseling. Mm-hmm. And I and I didn't thrive, mm-hmm. and I thought I was a failure when I left. Like I had that same mentality. Like, oh my god, you know, I came out here for this PhD, and and I didn't complete it. Mm-hmm. And I got really depressed about because I lost my identity. And um, it wasn't until I realized that I've heard these, I've heard, I've made mistakes before, and I, I have to get over it and work through it and move forward. It took me a while. Um, to get over it and to get in the work and to work through it to where um, I got a job on campus, um, which allowed me to have reduced tuition and allowed me to, yeah. you know, look into further mm-hmm. further educating myself because I, I think I'm gonna, I'm going to be a career student the rest of my life. I'll be doing something with you know with school, so why not further my education and thrive while I'm doing it? And I love the program that I'm in, but I've heard no, and again to me it's just okay. Well, you're saying you no. Know, there, there's got to be another way. Always there's always another way. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, there's also something I think that you just mentioned that might be interesting to lis- to listeners. Um, you're getting a degree in, in Ed D. Um, what can you talk? Can you talk to like the difference between an Ed D and a PhD? Oh um, man! Just like what, what goes into them, <laughs> sure. what what you might be able to do with an yeah. Ed D that you could or couldn't do with a sure. PhD, and vice versa. It, it, you know, there's a lot of uh, stuff in the literature, and there's a lot of stuff about where what's better, an EdD or a PhD. So in my former PhD program, they wanted people to teach, to be professors, mm. you know, and um, that's something I didn't want to do. But with this EdD degree here on this campus, there it's, it's more for practitioners, people already in the field mm. of education or, you know, in that realm, whether it's high school or college. And I want to still work with where I'm at and what I do, um, but have that EdD you know, because I guess for selfish reasons, because I was I was there and I still and I want that. Right. Yeah. Sure. What is there any difference in like the requirements? Like what you need is, is an ed D a PhD is pretty research mm-hmm. intensive, at least in, yeah. in some 
part is yeah it, do you have that as well or what yeah are, no what are you, you, right you, you know there's research you do a dissertation you have comps mm -hmm. um you do you take all the classes and so forth um but for the most part people that come out aren't going to be teaching education they're going to be mostly going back to their jobs or further in their career or mm -hmm. you know moving up in their in their job status sure yeah yeah it does definitely probably uh it's going to open up more jobs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's getting into some, some of those higher director mm -hmm. roles, um, things like that. I wanted to go back again a little bit mm -hmm. to your story. Sure. You have a very well-developed story. I heard you talk about it like kind of before this. We were kind of going into this. And you talked about the importance of story to your trio students. And this is something that, I mean, I'm very interested in and story and people's story. That's sure. the main reason why I wanted to start doing yeah. um, this, this podcast. Um, I just love hearing people's stories. I love thinking about my own story. And part of the, my goal of this is to hopefully that the listeners will reflect on their own story and kind of build it. Can you tell me what, what does that mean in like when, when you're talking to trio students and you're talking about story and, and how it can kind of help bridge those the, those gaps to success along sure. the way? Well, in general, uh, your story is very, very important because it's your story, right? Like it's not it's not your friends or your cousins or your mom's. Your, it, it's your story that, you know, those people may be incorporated in your story, but it's, it's almost to me very existential because you write your own story as you go, right? Each step is a story, whether it's forward, sideways, backwards, it's still your story. Mm -hmm. You're still making that decision to do what you do, right? Or not make that decision to do what you do. And in TRIO, we feel that it's very important that our students have a voice and that that, that they understand that, that their voice matters and, and that we help them make their voices known and that they hear their voice and that they understand that we have their backs and that because there, there's a lot of stigma with students that are that are maybe you know first generation or low income or even students with disabilities you know that 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 maybe they're less than and they're not they're mm -hmm. if anything they're, they're they're more resilient than anybody else because yeah, they, they, they have to like fight other battles that maybe not everybody has to fight you know whether it's through education or through work or just being the first to do something in their family, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's huge. So it, it's a huge deal, and, and I don't know if students fully realize that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, doing that reflection, learning about that story, that it's all kind of part of it, can help them realize that they do deserve to be here. Yeah. Like, the hurdles they've overcome, yeah. the strengths that they have they might not be aware of that have kind of helped them through these things. Um, and even maybe the, the pitfalls, backslides they've yeah. had and what they've learned from yeah, them. Yeah, it's part of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Was there anything you did along the way that was like you were like so glad that you did? Was there any decisions or choices? Yeah, and, and, and this is not to plug anything, but I was at AmeriCorps. <laughs> Oh, nice. I was hoping we'd talk about AmeriCorps. That's excellent. Yeah. yeah, getting things done, right? Yeah. 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 So on my, uh, I, I call it my, my tour of duty. So on my second tour of getting kicked out of college, um, AmeriCorps came into my lap. And at the time um, Cal uh, in California, uh, AmeriCorps was something that was very new. It was, it was, it didn't exist. Um, and, I was fortunate to be in a pilot program for AmeriCorps. It was only, I think, maybe between six and eight counties that participated. And then the next year, it opened up to bigger counties. But our initiative was to provide mentorship in the community. So hire mentors, get you know, get the students involved in um, marketing. I mean, we, we did average, we did everything, mm -hmm. you know. And we and we would go to meetings in Sacramento and and report back and talk about what we're doing and um, so it, it was kind of AmeriCorps who got that got me that jump start on there's something after college you know because when you're in college it seems like sometimes when you're immersed it's a crutch you know and then when you when you're in the real world you're like oh my god like there's more than just college you know mm -hmm. so I was kind of in that limbo to where I wasn't in college because of the stuff that I did. 
but AmeriCorps was the next best thing to, um, you know, for like having a career, starting a career, and then you know getting paid and then getting a stipend. I mean, and and you know to pay off student loans and so forth. But I had great AmeriCorps experience, um, and and I look at it now how much it's grown like all over the nation okay. and and just stuff you're doing, man. And and like we have an AmeriCorps student right now in the Trio yeah. program who's a former Trio student, you know, and it's it's great. That it's there. My one of my coworkers, you know, Lillian, was AmeriCorps mm-hmm. in San Diego, you know, and and it's just amazing how much it's branched out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you do know that I'm uh, <laughs> that I'm a big fan of AmeriCorps. I know you. Are. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I did two tours of yeah. two tours myself, yeah. and, and now um, yeah, kind of work to promote those services yeah. and that program here on campus. But uh, yeah, I think that I mean it's a it's a great program. It's a great foot in the door. It's a great first step. It is. You build, a, you build a ton of skills that you don't know you're going to need. That's right for yeah. the real world. And yeah. I think that that's something you know, when you're just moving straight from high school to college to the job market. There's there's some things you just kind of might miss out on yeah. a little bit, and and AmeriCorps is just a a great way to kind of build those skills while also like you're saying earning some money, yeah. getting a getting some money for your education yeah. along the way mm-hmm. um, and also just making connections and kind of yeah. putting it together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, double, no problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's awesome. I mean, it was part of something I wanted to say, you know, um, like I said, it was new and we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. We were just, you know, a bunch of kids wanting to do service, right? Mm-hmm. We, we wanted to help our community. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, you know. About. And um, we didn't know that we were going to make an impact or even have this program when the pilot was done, mm-hmm. you know. And it was it was a two-year gig, you know. I can do two years and, and you know, figure something out, you know. And through there, you know, we had the California Conservation Corps, you mm-hmm. know, helped, I did some of that. And and then I got other friends involved, and, and they were doing AmeriCorps. I have a friend right now who's in Montana doing AmeriCorps, you know, I think with cutting trees, doing fire yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she loves it. I mean, she's like, oh, my God, thank you for telling me. I'm like, cool, that's what I do, you know. Um, it's all about making building, building those bridges and making those connections for other people, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, Maurice, it's an awesome story. I'm glad to know you. I'm glad to have you on campus. I love have, have your spirit. Um, as we kind of wrap up here um, – is there anything that you kind of want to plug for Trio coming up? Yeah. Oh, thanks, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. So in two weeks, uh, November November 8th is First Generation Day. Um, uh, that is defined as uh, if you're first generation, your parents didn't complete a four-year degree. Um, that's And that's national that we celebrate that. But here at ISU, we're going to be doing a, a whole celebration week. Um, so we're going to have, you know, panels and people speaking and scavenger hunts and great prizes um, and just more uh, information about um, first generation and what we do and what they do, you know, all the things that we're doing. And so, you know, we're, we're, ca- we're calling out first generation students and faculty and staff to come speak if, if needed. Um, and the website will launch probably either today, Friday or Monday with all the festivities and activities that, that are going to be happening. So, yeah, first generation day week actually at ICU is, is what I want to plug awesome awesome we'll work our hardest to get this up thank you brother. appreciate <laughs> it man yeah thanks so much for coming in today maurice thank you man appreciate it yeah and that's my conversation with maurice what an incredible story of determination in the face of adversity to overcome and achieve and also to realize your weaknesses and step back to realize your strengths and move forward If you have any questions about your career pathway, please visit the ISU Career Center website at isu.edu slash careers. Also, be sure to check the Pathways podcast website at kisu.org under programs. New episodes are added weekly. Likewise, you can hear select episodes on KISU the second Wednesday of every month at 7.30 p.m.